Hello everybody, welcome back to Lockdown Lessons Part 42 now. And with me today, I've got Raj from Adventum Wealth. So firstly, I just wanted to say a big hello to you, Raj. Hi, Philip, how are you? I am very pleasure well, to have you. me here. Uh, yeah. <laughs> I'm very well, thank you very much, and happy to have you as well. So um, this, this is a, these interviews are called Lockdown Lessons, and, and really the whole idea is the people that are actually watching this, I'm hoping, are going to glean something from this interview, are going to learn something from your experiences during lockdown, which is going to help them. So the first question which I always lead with, really, is um, if we could move back to March the 23rd last year, that fateful day when Britain got put into lockdown, yes. Um, at what point did before then did you think mm, there might be a bigger problem here because uh, not everyone realized straight away right so philip uh, as you are, as you know uh, adventum wealth is basically uh, india's largest offshoring corporate vehicle to enable high net worth wealth from india to actually be deployed into leveraged real estate assets in the uk right and for us uh, to enable that business and mobilize any transaction travel is key right so you can imagine the level of stress uh, that we felt as a team that, you know, we neither can we meet uh, our clients, which, which is typically done in person as well, because it's a very private banking, uh, private client kind of a business. And uh, nor is travel to the UK going to be possible with the lockdowns where, you know, the ability to showcase the property or the real estate asset uh, before that final, yes, let's do it uh, comes to us. Um, so we were very, very concerned. Uh, I, I think... Uh, I've, I've done a few interviews, uh, even locally here in the media, uh, where people asked, you know, where do you see real estate? Where do you see interest rates? Uh, where do you see transactions? You know, and, and of course, I think for the first 10, 15, 20 days, I'm sure like all of uh, everyone around the world, we were also quite dumbfounded as to what to expect, right? Uh, absolutely jittery. It's panned out pretty well, Philip. Uh, it's panned out pretty well, I must say. <laughs> Yeah, it, it's it's um it has in the end, doesn't it? And for a lot of people, they they've gone through uh, issues at different times during lockdown. But it's great to know that it's working yes. out for you now. What would you say um, the biggest problem for you that you had to overcome in the early days was, Raj? Um, I think I think the, the 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 first was to actually overcome my own sort of uh, get my own head around it. If I can be very very honest here, right? I, what am I supposed to do? You know, if 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 the if the travel, which is an integral part of my transaction, is something that I need to now do away with and still be able to transact, what is it that I need in terms of my tools, my pitch? Uh, you know, how do you talk to clients? How do you continue talking to clients in, in a mindset uh, where everyone's shifted, obviously, uh, from, uh, you know, regular life to panic, to pain uh, at some places where, of course, people lost some of their loved ones. Um, we, we actually embarked on a very large digital drive uh, obviously, the real or physical assets were uh, collateralized digitally and distributed. I think, I think there was a sea change in, in how we've had to deal with several aspects of showcasing as well as transacting uh, our business. Okay, that's, that's, that's interesting. I mean, a lot of people have had to shift digi digitally because they didn't have any other, yes. other choice. So how's that worked out for you? Because obviously before you were, uh, you were greeting uh, uh, overseas investors, they were coming to the airport, you were meeting them here in the UK, and you were then showing them around and showing them what could be achieved with their money. Um, as opposed to obviously in, in the past few months or a few months back where this wasn't yes. possible. So how, yes. were you, how were you actually able to illustrate the possibilities over in the UK over Zoom or over other platforms? Yeah, so Zoom has been a boon, isn't it? I guess for all of us, uh, it is to remain connected and, and find our common platform to find people uh, to connect with, right? Um, we, we, we learned uh, pretty early on uh, from our physical experiences, uh, you know, over the past four or five years of being in business that uh, smaller assets tend to be something that clients may decide on even remotely without having a need for physical presence, physical validation, uh, especially in the context of investment property. Now, this is where I think uh, we had a big winning. Uh, we've always positioned ourselves as a wealth management company, which will grow or, uh, you know, safeguard or ring fence wealth uh, using diversification methods and into real estate, right? We're not into equities, we're not into stocks, we're not into bonds uh, anywhere on the planet. Um, investment property is about demonstrating returns, generating that rental stream, leveraging at the right value. And as we moved along the pandemic and the lockdown, we realized interest costs were starting to weaken. Uh, banks were obviously losing their purses. 
uh, interest costs around the world were allowed to drop even further. And while we saw a, a, a serious pause where nothing was moving, we also started seeing a lot of action and mobility, especially with the UK real estate, the stamp duty holidays, etc., uh, moving on, so on and so forth. And we we uh, focused on the uh, on the people who were looking at India in the context of this pandemic and saying, "Oh my God, my life is at risk here. Uh, infrastructure um, shortcomings are something I don't want to ever face again in my life." Uh, the whole concept, and 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 we we sort of. Uh, coined this uh, within the team is that people are now looking at parallel homes to run parallel lives in different countries as an option B. And that's the theme we sort of uh, uh, harnessed or milked, if I can say, uh, and worked to bring products, uh, you know, that could be transacted quicker in the context of investment safety, uh, foreign income, uh, cash flow safety, uh, and, 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 and promoted uh, aspects advantages of, of ownership uh, overseas rather than the, the ownership of the asset alone uh, to enhance uh, the sort of pitch, if I could say. And then, of course, UK transactions are led by solicitors. They, they don't really require physical presence. So the transactional bit anyway was something that was managed uh, or, uh, you know, remotely over email anyway. So uh, that, that really, it was a big learning. It was a big shift in product strategy. It was, of course, going back to the drawing board and changing our pitch but uh, we've had one of our best years at adventum so far uh, right. ironically in covid talk me through <laughs> talk me through some of the wins that you've had then raj recently um i think uh, we we've actually seen uh, over the last 6 months philip uh, what we've had to uh, you know by 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 design or, or by by an extension of our new pitch uh, we've had to include an immigration desk and an immigration service to our offerings, uh, it's not our forte. Uh, obviously, we we cannot become uh, you know the best at the game in in a few months. We we partnered with uh, with uh, with the giants in the industry like Henley and partners like Decart, uh, who are of course uh, you know uh, long tested for their uh, immigration skills and knowledge uh, to bring people over to UK, to Malta, to Portugal under the Golden Visa scheme, etc. And we tried to shy away from the if and but of will I get my immigration status achieved or not. We've tried to focus on where there are government programs, you know, where against a certain fee or a payment or an investment in property, the immigration bit becomes certain rather than uncertain because, you know, th this is, we don't want to be subject to failures for no reason uh, that can be attributed to us, right? So with those sort of programs, we've been able to curate uh, an offering to these clients which went, which, which sort of, Put property at the center, but created an option of a of a second lifestyle uh, wrapped around uh, wrapped around with uh, uh, the offering of uh, moving as well. If it should it should it become the case? Good, that's fantastic. So, um, one of the one of the questions I always ask is that is there anything that you've had to do being forced upon you during uh, the lockdown in the UK that you're actually thinking, well, that's not such a bad idea. We're going to carry on doing some of the things that we have been doing because it's kind of worked out okay for us. So the big change, uh, Philip, was uh, apart from travel intercontinentally uh, to reach UK. Uh, Domestic travel was also something that was banned, right? I mean, we, we had a period of airlines uh, not flying at all for months. And uh, what we've learned is that filtering clients, I, I think the whole world has adapted, right? First of all, it's not just us, but we are part of the larger economy, larger ecosystem of the whole planet. Everyone's over Zoom and happy and, meet, and comfortable to meet over Zoom. The, the physical handshake is not something that has become the necessary start point to a, to a transaction, right? Sure. Um, and because of that, what we've done is uh, we've tried to contain costs and most importantly, save time. And we do our filtering of client meetings over Zoom to understand even if there is a level of seriousness, a level of uh, actionable points that, that need to be taken forward, uh, requiring or warranting a physical meet. Uh, and that, has, that is something that we are going to imbibe and keep for us forever. Right? And there's no reason why you know, we would travel like headless chickens, uh, like in the early days, you know, four clients have called, let's fly to Delhi, five clients have called, let's fly to Kolkata. I don't think that's happening anymore. We will filter clients and assimilate them into a bucket of serious clients and, and plan a trip, uh, you know, saving huge amount of time, most importantly, over costs. Fantastic. 
Uh, that's 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 great. I mean, it is, it's always interesting to ask that question because everyone's different. But I yes, think there, there have been certain things we've learned during lockdown. We thought, well, actually, that's not that bad after all. And yes. other things we're happy to just uh, hang on a minute. We do want some face to face contact. Yeah, no, of course. But but that can be a choice, right? That does not need Absolutely. to be the default. I think that's what's changed, right? And I think this is an efficiency the whole world is going to take with them post COVID. Absolutely. So if there is a post COVID. <laughs> yeah, I don't absolutely. Know if yeah, yeah, we're, we're hoping so. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> I think we're not we're not mid COVID. Hopefully, we're post COVID. Right, yes, that makes yes, sense. <laughs> yes, yes. So, so, so for people that are actually watching this right now, that that are thinking, okay, um, um, I'm quite interested in finding out more about what you do and how you help people at events and wealth. Um, what would your sort of ideal client look like, and how do you actually go about helping them, Raj? My ideal client is someone who is uh, reasonably exposed, um, uh, reasonably aspirational, uh, and I'm not saying out of luxury. Uh, I think luxury is, is, is a very, I think it's a misconstrued word here. I think someone who's financially uh, savvy or has the acumen to understand the, the importance and role that diversification strategies play out, especially for capital that is locked in emerging markets. Uh, we have a currency that depreciates against the larger, stronger currencies of the world by a good four, four and a half percent every year. So any asset uh, play that you have turned around and held in stronger currencies rather than the Indian rupee is by design or default going to give you that additional four and a half percent when you turn it back into rupees a year later. Right. And this is a story that's been playing out on a compounded annual growth rate uh, year on year. Right. Wow. So that's one. Uh, second, uh, I think we're looking at people who are looking at the future and saying, I have children who are going to study in, uh, you know, overseas, whether it is the US, Australia, Canada, UK, which are prime centers of education around the world. If I have to start saving for my child uh, for his education starting today, then you're, you're going against headwinds when you're trying to make a saving strategy in rupees because it's going against the headwinds of currency depreciation. So why not build a savings pot in a harder currency that is positively geared or leveraged well uh, to give you that return, uh, you know, not worrying about the currency hedge uh, in the future, right? So it's, it's anyone who, who's looking at, um, from an Indian context, uh, a slightly more aspirational life for the next generation or a pension that is in a harder currency that is safeguarding against inflation. Uh, we are all we are all consumers of the dollar, right? Whether regardless of where we live in the world, whether we're consuming oil, clothes, uh, you know, spectacles, shoes, these are all typically foreign goods uh, that you are paying in dollars one way or the other. Uh, the idea is, have you thought about creating an income in dollars or in a stronger currency rather than just the rupee, right? I mean, that's the real theme that we're trying to, uh, and of course, demonstrate by various financial models to, to, to exploit and show the power of, of such a strategy. <laughs> Absolutely. So, okay. So, so the people that are looking to, to benefit in the ways that we've just discussed them, the final question really, for, I, I suppose, Raj, is how best can they reach you or how best can they reach your partners at Aventum? Well, uh, the best way is to, uh, uh, of course, write to me. I'm available on my email. It's rajania at uh, adventumwealth.com. Uh, I'm, I'm available on LinkedIn. Uh, Philip, uh, you, I'm sure uh, people can reach out to, if they know you and, and you can make that connect as well. We'll be very happy to, and, and I'm very happy to do a very concentrated, focused, uh, you know, 40, 50 minute, uh, you know, consultation over Zoom, understand scenarios, uh, you know, pro provide certain ways to probably solve or, or start solving uh, and move in the right direction in terms of building a strong foundation of uh, a diversified wealth portfolio. Fantastic. That's lovely. And what I'm going to do, Raj, after this interview, I'm just going yeah. to post in the comments below um, your email address so, so people can just click on it to make and, it nice and easy for them. But for now, thank you so much, Raj. It's been an absolute pleasure as always and looking forward to catching up soon. Philip, thank you so much. Thank you so much. Take Brilliant. Care. Bye. Take care. Bye.